Well, Neymar is an absolute disgrace. I'm sorry, I don't care how much he costs. I don't care how much he earns. What sort of man is he to collapse and roll around on the turf when he's being tapped so gently like this? I'm sorry, is this Neymar or Rivaldo 2002? The Mexican fella grazes his ankle with the studs of his boots. Yeah, fair enough, he shouldn't have done it, but Christ above, a butterfly landing would have done more damage. And then he spasms out of control like he's possessed by something out of a dodgy horror movie. For the power of Christ compels you! I'd love to see this fella down a pub in Tullamore. Let's see what he'd do if someone steps on his foot then. Because if he tries hitting the deck and squirming like an epileptic badger, then he won't be getting back up. I mean, yeah, okay, we all know Neymar goes down more often than a Love Island contestant, but still. So I won't dwell on this too much, but Jesus Christ, he's making a show of himself. Like, I've seen some pundits say, oh, he's a great player, and he's also a great actor. No, this isn't, you think that's good acting? That's not even Adam Sandler level. That is straight to DVD level. But I was interested in how the Brazil-Mexico game was gonna go. I mean, Mexico were great against Germany. They got the job done against South Korea, but then they went and emptied their bowels against Sweden. Watching Mexico is like uh, a drunk toddler cutting your hair. You don't quite know what you're gonna, actually no, you, you do, you're, you're gonna get scalped. <laughs> yeah, never mind that one, that metaphor doesn't work. But to be fair, the Mexicans took it to the Brazilians in the first half. Full of purpose, running, but no real bite up front. Dear mister, I'm too good to call it right, my friend. This will be the last package I ever send your ass. Mexico's only problem was that for all their energy and movement, let's be honest, like, their most prolific finishers are either retired or fictitious movie characters. I swear to God, that actor just spent the entire movie using footage of Larry Bear. Well, you didn't fool me, lad. Brazil looked dangerous in patches, but it was in the second half where they made the breakthrough. William crossing for Neymar to tap home. No tears this time, thank Christ. Roberto Firmino out of the second late on. Brazil threw Mexico out in the last 16 out of World Cup for the fifth time in a row. Lads, that country has no luck at all. From Kitty grabbing that is threatening to build them a wall to not ending their goddamn last 16 curse. You really have to feel sorry for them. But Brazil march on, normal service has been resumed. But Neymar, Jesus Christ, I'd love to see him after a trip to the dentist. He's probably a write-off for the next week. Moving on, Belgium, just call them Rubinho because they just got out of jail. Lads, the World Cup has been weird enough without Japan making it into the quarterfinals, all right? But fair play to the lads, I expected them to be blown away by the Belgian golden era and the Premier League's two best players and Eden Hazard. But no, after 50 minutes, Japan and we're 2-0 up. Lads, you cannot underestimate the level of low expectations I had for these players. They had basically scraped through their group by the skin of their teeth, basically living off Carlos Sanchez's red for three matches. Ironically, this was the best I'd seen them play. Who knew they could actually play a bit of all when they weren't camped inside their own half? Terrified to go within an inch of the other half's box, like a born-again Christian on their wedding- Wait, wait, no, I, I already did that one yesterday. <laughs> Too many videos, lads. Japan have never been famed for their football teams. Excellent cuisine, sure. Delightful TV commercials, definitely. What the fuck was- And, of course, the never-ending Pokemon. Christ of all, 20 years later and your man is probably still trying to become a Pokemon master. In reality, he probably snapped like a twig years ago and now spends his days hooked on crystal meth and uses Pikachu as some sort of depraved sex slave. Where am I going with this? But no, Japan really surprised- <laughs> What a segue. Japan really surprised me, alright? Playing some nice, intricate stuff and their two goals- Oh, beautiful stuff. They threatened to send the biggest dagger through the Belgian squad since the goalie fucked the ginger's girlfriend. Allegedly, of course. Isn't it nice how the two were able to build a bridge and get over it? <laughs> But lads, I, I was ready to slam Roberto Martinez in this video. Like, I was already about to spit fire about him. You know, going off that he's the baldest, luckiest man in world football to be given this delightful job. You know, the man entrusted with Belgium's golden generation. He's the same fella who signed Aruna Kone twice. Yeah, that's, that's great thinking. But, uh, but, uh, I guess I'll just have to rein that in for, um for next time. But Belgium huffed and puffed, uh, but they, they struggled. Was it the Lukaku of last week? No, it was the Lukaku of Chelsea and the Lukaku that went about two months of last season looking about as useful in front of goal as a fridge freezer. But then, headers apiece from Jan Vertonghen and Marouane Fellaini leveled matters, calmed everything down. The Japanese are on the back foot, but then, 94th minute, Keishuki Honda lines up a free kick. Chance to win it. Bottom corner. Great save, Courtois. All right, goes out for a corner. All right, two choices, Honda. Take a short corner, play out the last 15 seconds, and regroup for extra time. Or, hoof it into the box for Courtois to collect, and before starting a lightning counter-attack that ends with the ball in the back of the Japanese net moments later. Naturally, Honda chose the second one. But, uh, don't worry, lad, it's not like that's gonna haunt you for the rest of your life.
Uh, but lads, the right team did go through, and to be honest, it would have been a bit awkward if Japan had played England some way down the line. I, I don't know why, but uh, you know, just something tells me it would have been a f PR disaster. All right, lads. In light of the game tonight, I just want to do something a little bit different. The England game is obviously, obviously tonight, and yes, excitement has gripped uh, the the nation. Yes, it, it, it's coming home. All the. You, yeah, you haven't won two consecutive knockout games in nearly 30 years, but sure, whatever you're having. Probably whatever Paulo Guerrero was having in his tea. But when I first started this channel back in October 2016, my first videos were fan views down at Wembley for England versus Malta. Christ above, everyone was so miserable. And not just because they had an annoying Irish prat shoving a camera in their face. I mean, considering the last time they played against a bunch of part-timers and then got embarrassed in front of the watching world. I just want to have a little look and remind myself of what the England fans, you know, what, what was the sort of mood at the start of the World Cup qualifying campaign. And kind of contrast it to now, because everyone is all, you know, we're, we're gonna win the whole thing. Oh uh, yeah, that 10 second ice cream fan jingle. I forgot about that. Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. <laughs> Professionalism. That is world-class Scorsese directing on point. The first shot is an empty flight of stairs, because who needs the f***ing presenter? Who needs it? Or a forehead, clearly. Oh, lads, do I have to watch this? I'm regretting it already. <laughs> Jeez, English football's in some state at the minute. The FA appointing managers every couple of years. The national team getting knocked out of tournaments to countries with populations the size of Sheffield. And a complete golden generation wasted. I was so shit at this. How was I not sacked after 10 minutes? I actually remember I filmed this on the stairs of a university that I no longer attended. I effectively snuck in to do this. I'm just realizing now, guy in the bushes with a camera at a university he doesn't go to. The exact sort of behavior that got my uncle locked up for nine years. What do you think of the England national team? English team. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, they're terrible. Uh, it's good play, it's good, uh, have a good play. Yeah. No, come on, don't lie, man. They're, they lost to Iceland in the Euros. Uh, obviously Iceland was a was a low moment. Yeah, the entire nation of Ireland found it hilarious. Um, it, it's like I was begging to get the head slapped off me. So boys, are Malta going to win today? Yes. 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 I think all three of you are liars. Why am I putting on a fake Maltese accent? You sport Arsenal. Yep. Does it pain you that 50% of the England team is made up of Spurs players? Why am I such a dick? It's a training game, isn't it? It's really boring, to be honest. Passionate of this. You leave my parents' marriage out of this! We've, we've come here and we've walked out at half time against the side Malta. They're, they're not a, a, even close to the calibre of England, yet we've, we've sat there for 45 minutes and it, it's just... It's, a disgrace, honestly. It's, it's an absolute joke. Oh, I remember this guy. He was a ray of sunshine, a beacon of positivity, but also kind of emblematic of uh, the entire... He kind of just captured the real mood of the place. Just everyone was so despondent. European media don't do anything like what we do to our English the manager. They do the opposite. They support their teams. Nail on the head with the media. I mean, we've seen that with Raheem Sterling recently, so fair play to that fella. We need to stop trying ourselves as being a country at the elite level, because we're not. I mean, I've been there for many years. We need passionate players in our England side, you know, and that's, that's what I miss. Oh, this is just depressing looking back. I mean, I knew they were sickened, but I'd actually forgotten how miserable they were and how how little hope they had in the I mean not to be fair I find it hilarious <laughs> we're watching millionaire players who, who don't want to play for the shirt it's and I think personally that that's the problem nothing ever improves the media sort of hypes everyone up I mean every time we come to a tournament it's like okay England are gonna do really well but why would they do really well who should be the next manager of England I don't care who it is, somebody who's English is going to stand there and go, Come on referee! Come on England! Stop that! Get off you Get somebody else on! Come on! Come on! That's what we want. Either that man was talking about Neil Warnock, or someone else who's always on the verge of a heart attack. This guy Roy Hodgson again to be fair. Still not sure what Antoine Sibierski was doing at the England game though. Jürgen Klinsmann thought he brings a bit of character, a bit of charisma into the setup. Um, as long as it's not Southgate though, then I'm alright, but Klinsmann will be my choice. Anyone know what Jürgen Klinsmann is doing these days? My guess is sitting at home crying into his pillow after helping USA fail to qualify from a region that included Panama. Someone English that, <laughs> I don't know. Someone English, hashtag Brexit. Teddy Venables, get him back, he was 
Something good. Boris and Wenger. Boris and Wenger. Paolo Di Canio. That is suicide. Personally, I don't think there's anyone out there who, who could take the England job at the moment. Night in night was the last time we got to a semi-final. I wasn't even born, so I'd like to see someone actually come in, whether they're English, foreign, it don't really matter. Just bring success back to the nation. Such a large job that there's nobody out there that could actually take it on. Somehow I don't think this fella is screaming, it's coming home out of his car window. Take one of the people off Sky Sports pundits, because they criticise every England manager, Alan yeah. Stewart. He criticises every England manager, so let him have the job and see how easy it is. Led, come on, I don't think the FA were stupid enough to appoint someone whose management career ended in relegation seven years earlier. Oh wait! But what do you think, lads? There were a few claims in there that the passion was gone from the England setup. Is Gareth Southgate the right man after all? Are y'all gonna be in tears at 9 o'clock tonight? We shall see. Did I just sound like a pubescent 12 year old there? Most definitely. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Leave a like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. My Twitter's here, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.